What's up guys, welcome back to another video with Solar Energy System Design Week 4. This is the last part in which I'm going to be now calculating or sizing the inverter based on the uh, specifications of the solar module, what are the key specifications that you need to look at when uh, designing or installing an inverter yourself. So let's get into the video. So when it comes to uh, site surveys or residential checklists, there are some key things that you need to do. The first thing is to take measurements and photos of the area of the surrounding buildings, uh, just the front side, back side, or, or you know, just to have a good idea of the pictures or any other things that you might have missed or not even you know, looked into. Using a tape measure to record the length of, and the width of the area, you know, of the roof space, uh, to know how long it will take to accommodate for the solar panel installation, knowing the azimuth angle, the right uh, direction that the roof is facing, you know whether it's 180 degrees or 170 degrees or you know but depending on that you can also calculate the tilt angle from the sun the hum, what's the slope of the roof you know so based on that whether it's a uh, flat roof or is it tilted and, and from that you know your the second point here is to look at the roof structure what type of material you're looking at you know whether it's concrete uh, wooden material the thickness of that you know whether the load will be able to be bare bearing the load of the solar panels that will be mounted on so all these types of uh, analysis for the roof structure itself and also the shade analysis seeing how many hours of sun or, or shade will be present during the year or using any digital uh, solimetric sun eye or the solar pathfinder instrument to do the calculations and uh, measurements then you can also determine the actual size of the roof space so calculate the area the length of the roof so you can have a better understanding uh, of the available area and then and then once you you know you can also go inside the building as well looking at the ceiling of the roof you know the inner uh, structure of the roof you know, see how the system will be installed where you can fit in the battery the inverter how the wiring will also be uh, run down through the walls as well so you can also look at the inner roof area uh, on the ceiling of the building and the last but not least is the breaker or the circuit box so you know just to see uh, if you have at least two or more open circuit breakers that you can uh, install and fit in with the, when it comes to having a net metering system or an inverter you know that's being installed so just to see if you have two open circuit breakers to install PV system um, next when it comes to system designing from modules to so sizing strings of modules there are three key parameters within uh, each three of them, there are also additional three uh, specifications and, and checklists, checklists that you need to know. First is calculating total energy based on upon uh, energy requirements. So that also you need to know uh, the total area, available area based on the, 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 the energy requirements, the calculation of the data of the site and location, and the estimation of the losses. Uh, so, f and for number two here, calculating based on available area for installation. So again, the three uh, key figures uh, or bullet points that you need to know is, you know, the the calculation for the data for the site and location, the estimation of the losses, uh, and the available area. And the last for calculating based on available finances and budget. Uh, if you're, you know, uh, you have to take into account of how much money you're going to be spent for labor, for cost installation. Uh, system BOS balance of system components uh, all these sort of things just to check and be, you know be prepared uh, and then now it goes to the inverter sizing and selection so w if you have an inverter in front of you and you look at the specifications sheet or at the back of the inverter uh, itself you can see that you have to look at the DC input power that is always going to be greater than the AC output power because of the efficiency the normal inverter efficiency is around 90 to 95 percent so that's why the DC input has to be higher than the AC output you have to also look at the turn on voltage so turn on voltage is the minimum voltage well it needs to be higher than the minimum operating voltage in order to operate because the minimum operating voltage is very low but the turn on voltage is higher than that so you need to make sure it, it does that so you, solar panels are able to uh, accommodate and reach those and, and reach those uh, voltage levels the DC maximum input power if you want to calculate that you just multiply the maximum operating voltage range so the voltage range that you would have is operating ranges around let's say 140 to 150 or 140 to uh, 600 volts or 450 volts for example that 450 volts is going to be the maximum upper limit voltage range and you multiply that with the maximum input current 
uh, in the DC specification, obviously, for the AC maximum power, the output power, you want, if you want to know, you multiply that by the uh, nominal output voltage. So the nominal output voltage, let's say if it's, if it's, four, if it's 240 volts, multiply that with the maximum output current that the inverter will, uh, will produce. So let's say if it's, you know, let's say 15 amps or 18 amps. So 18 times 240 volts uh, will give you the AC maximum output power. Uh, and then the inverter efficiency. So we know the formula, it's to divide the AC output power by the DC input power and multiply that with 100. Nowadays, typically the inverter efficiencies are 90 to 95, even up to 99 nowadays with the better technologies and uh, uh, circuit components and yeah the electronics of the inverters itself so so let's look, let's look at an example of how you would size an inverter so let's say we have a 7.4 kilowatt solar system with a 300 watt solar panels how would we know how many modules we need we know we know this before we divide 7400 watts by 300 watts to give us 24 panels then from that, if we have a uh, specifications of these solar modules for VOC, VMP, IC, and IMP right there. From that, if you have a series connection, so let's say you want to do a series connection of solar modules, right? 24 modules in series uh, all together. So you're going to have a high voltage and a low current system. So you multiply the VOC because that's the maximum voltage with the number of modules, which is 24. So 38.2 volts VOC times 24 modules gives us 917 volts now this is too high for the inverter itself because you have to look at the uh, the operating you have to look at the maximum input voltage in DC side that the inverter can take in the maximum input voltage for the inverter at the DC side so you have to look at that and if it's too high then it's not going to work so let's go for a parallel connection for a parallel connection if you go for a two a parallel connection or two strings of 12 modules each string so that means that you're going to multiply VOC with 12 so VOC is 38.2 times 12 modules we have 458.4 volts in one string per string and that's you have to, and then you have to check that with the maximum input voltage for the DC inverter in our case I've chosen 600 volts so that's less than 600 volts so that would that would meet and that would work and then you can also calculate for the VMP the, the, the maximum power point voltage that when the the solar modules are connected and operated so you multiply again with the 12 modules, VMP, which is 36 volts times 12 volts, gives us 432 volts. And that is also, uh, you have to also check that with the operating voltage range. So if it's between 150 to, to 450 volts, for example, that's, a, that's the uh, operating voltage range for inverter DC. And in our case, 432 volts does meet within the, the bracket, the operating voltage range of 150 to 450 volts, so that it works. And in this case, two strings of 12 modules is the suitable uh, sizing, system sizing. And then you want to now calculate the system current. The system current is to multiply the number of strings that we have, because in parallel, the current adds up, right? So the number of strings we have is two, multiply that with the maximum current, ISC. So ISC is 8.6 amps with 12, gives us 17.2 amps. And you compare that with the maximum inverter current at DC. So the maximum inverter current at DC specifications is, for example, 20 amps. 17.2 amps is less than that. That also works and meets. So you have to mix, mix, you know, mix and match, see what works, what doesn't work, what type of solar system you're looking at, a high voltage, low current, or a, you know, suitable high current, high, high voltage, uh, a little bit of mix and, uh, mix, mix and match take both into considerations, calculate for both VOC and VMP for each string, the ISC as well and IMP if you want to as well. IMP is the same thing, multiply IMP with the number of strings, 8.3 amps times 2, you get around uh, 15, uh, uh, something 15 amps, something like that. But anyways, yeah. Uh, and also if you have inverter that is you know, oversized. So if you, if you have a, let's say a 10 kilowatt inverter and you have a solar system that is like barely even five kilowatts, it's, let's say it's four kilowatts, that's not going to work because the inverter already has, is oversized and, and whatever the power that the, that, that the solar system will produce and generate is going to be clipped off or cut off by the inverter because of how much uh, the, the low voltage that it's operating in because the system the solar system size itself is very low power low voltage uh, and low current uh, solar system so that's why you have to mix and match go for a solar system that is not too 
uh, oversized, but a little bit above the the solar system uh, rated output output power. So, so if you have a five kilowatt solar system, go for a seven kilowatt inverter. That's going to be the best. Uh, or you can go for a ten kilowatt, and then in the future you can have you can add more solar panels uh, if you have available space. That is, and then you can uh, you know they'll be more efficient as well with the inverter. But generally, don't go too high uh, with sizing the inverter based on the the solar system that you have. And that is it. That is all for the uh, lecture, the, the course, Solar System Energy Design. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini course series as much as I did. And in the future, if you want me to do more detailed uh, calculations for off-grid, on-grid, hybrid, taking into account the battery uh, sizing, the wiring sizing, the, the circuit circuit breakers, the fuses, uh, if you want to you know, make me go into more detailed step-by-step uh, -step calculations, using the softwares, PV Syst, uh software as well. Do let me know in the comments down below. Until then, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.